Hello and welcome to Sorry You Went Viral, all about the stories that have been setting social media alight uh, these last couple of weeks and the human stories behind those posts. I'm Tim. And I'm Hannah. Great to have you with us. Uh, on today's show coming up, we've got um, why an OnlyFans star posing with uh, a Chelsea fan went viral. More on that. And the really tragic story of the singer in the US um, who has since died of cancer. Um, but now her TikToks have been muted. And so we'll explain all of that and what, why that's happened. And also the doorbell that's got Disney lovers going completely nuts. But first, let's start with what's gone viral. And... I'm not a massive fan of cocktails in a can. Are you, <laughs> Hannah? I love a cocktail in a can as long as it's got as long as it's got what it says on the tin, you know. Indeed. So this is a story um, where it's been a big legal uh, lawsuit in the US against the makers of Budweiser, um, and they produce these cocktails called Rita. I guess in terms of Margarita. I think that's the oh, play on the name. Nice. Very Didn't clever. get that. Well done. But unfortunately, um, you'd expect they'd have tequila and other spirits in those in those cocktails. Um, but it was just fruit flavoured beer. Believe uh, it or not. Not my kind of thing. I um, mean, I don't drink, but I'd be pretty disappointed if um, if so. But um, as I said, the big lawsuit and um, after the after the lawsuit was they they found against the the brewer. They said anyone who um, has purchased these Rita cocktails, you've provided a receipt or proof of evidence, um, and you can get some compensation. And what I love about this is there's this woman um, uh, called Amanda or Parquet Court on Twitter. She just posted, she just uploaded this picture, as you can see on, uh, on the video, um, of her posing with a can of Rita. They tell her it's at a festival or just in a park, and she ended up getting 10 cents compensation for it which is just brilliant brilliant, brilliant. But it's only 10 cents but you could imagine then like everyone else piling in on this as well so poor and heuser bush the makers of budweiser suddenly have got this well this tweet alone got um nine million views <laughs> and so of those nine million there's bound to be a few rita drinkers in there as well who are just thinking oh have i got a receipt somewhere or a photo or goodness knows what so absolutely brilliant just like the number of people now piling in trying to get their their cent few cents worth uh, of compensation from the brewer. <laughs> they have. People have been sharing their screen grabs of their 25 cents or 10 cents they've got <laughs> for their cans off the back of this, which is just brilliant. Um, but again, just don't make up um, what's in your drinks. Frankly. Yeah, don't make it up. Because, I mean, 10 cents goes a, lot way, a long way when it's 9 million times, isn't it? <laughs> so... uh, next story. Oh, obviously, I was obsessed with the League Cup final uh, as a Liverpool fan. Yes, I can't. Honestly, uh, I had to confess, I didn't even know it was going on. Didn't even know. Don't blame but you. But... But, but I'm fascinated by this story, so tell us more. It's a bit of a tricky one. Um, mm -hmm. But um, you can see this photo uh, we're showing on the screen now. Mm -hmm. um, this is an OnlyFans model uh, whose name is Astrid Wet, which is very OnlyFans-y, should we say. She posted this photo on uh, outside Wembley of... Um, her with this man uh, we're not showing the man's face um in the photo uh for reasons that become apparent she claimed that this man had given her his son's ticket for the football obviously when the league cup final incredibly popular very hard to get a ticket um unfortunately um uh, for him someone zoomed in on the photo and showed that he had his flies undone um which as you can imagine posing with an only fans model with your flies undone, mm. with football fans, led to incredible amount of mocking. 15 million views her tweet got. Um, and, it, yeah, I mean, for the face of it, it sounds quite, you know, again, amusing and one of those things, a bit of football banter, but it actually gets a bit darker. So a guy um, called Dean um, quote tweeted um, saying that this guy is a friend of mine and this fake hungry T word, should we say, he has blatantly lied to get likes or whatever. He's been trolled relentlessly because of her lies. If you could retweet so people could see it's bullshit, that'd be great. He had to answer to his employer, family, etc. Um, obviously, a huge fallout from this photo. Um, again, there's a bit of back and forth, and after that, about whether he'd engaged in some conversation a week before. Um, 
he claimed that the friend then says this is only part of the story. Uh, ended up this guy, the centre of it all, ended up deleting his socials because of it. Obviously, a big fallout from his family and friends. And mm. you know, it's really tough situation. So I'm trying to work out what the moral of the story here is because, you know, she's got all the publicity that she possibly could have wanted out of it, even if she has had her her good name dragged through the mud um, as a sort of like a side effect. Um, I, but, you know, he had still kind of like been messaging her and contacting her. Nothing wrong with that. She's on OnlyFans. That's what she wants people to do. Um, so I don't know. I suppose it's just sort of like don't get involved in something if you don't want to sort of like to have the consequences of it. And also presumably he posed knowing that she was going to then kind of like put this picture all over the place because that's just that's kind of like her, that's her shtick that's what she does so i i, I don't yeah. know part of me thinks don't get involved in social media with social media stars and pose with them if you don't want to also get caught up in their game and from her mm. point of view i'd be like have a bit more consideration for the people who you're dragging through the mud just to make a profit yeah it's just really really tough situation it's really tough um next up would you want your husband to seductively make your dinner for you, Hannah? Um, I mean, the man can't boil an egg. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Lou, if you're, if you're listening, watching. Um, seductively? I mean, I, I suppose that'd be quite nice. I heard you haven't been feeling well, so I made you a few things to hopefully help you feel a little bit better. First, I have a homemade chicken noodle soup. It's packed with veggies and a flavorful broth. I know you're gonna like it. A little sprinkle of some chopped parsley to finish the soup off. I have some toasted sourdough garlic bread, some sliced oranges, some lemon honey ginger tea to soothe your throat. It's important for you to stay hydrated. A linen napkin and a spoon. And if you're feeling up to it, I got you a little sweet treat of a blueberry danish. I'll put that on the side. And there you go. I hope this helps. So this guy, this guy called William Conrad underscore on TikTok, and um, mm -hmm. he calls himself your stay at home boyfriend. Um, and he's, I'd say, divided TikTok. There are certainly lots of people who absolutely love this guy. Um, I find it a little creepy. But I can see why he appeals. I don't know how you found it. I find it really creepy. I mean, it, I, I like the idea of, I mean, I get the whole Nigella thing of just sort of like seductively talking about food and presenting it and all the rest of it. And I, and, but it's clearly people like that. They're not, they're not necessarily interested in him. It's just his voice and the way he's doing it. But for me, I'm just a bit like, Ooh. but maybe that is just because I I know that would never, ever, 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 ever happen in my own life. <laughs> I feel tempted now to try and seductively make some toast, tea and toast for my partner yeah. next time in that way. I think she'd just go stop doing that if I tried yeah. anything like that at all. Or she'd just be like, take it away, just eat it yourself. <laughs> no, not making me feel better. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> there were funny there's some comments are joking about how he's kind of talking to a kidnap, you know, someone who's kidnapped <laughs> or something. It is a kind of a game when you think about it. I kind of like it does play into the kind of ASMR easy listening and uh, I can see why it does appeal, but it is a bit freaky. Yeah. Um <laughs> next <laughs> Next, a really sad story, and um, you may have seen yes. it's covered on mainstream media uh, of this woman called Kat Janice. Um, mm -hmm. Let's play you a little clip of her uh, TikTok.
So very sad news uh, to let you know is that um, Kat has since died. Um, she's a young mum. She's just 31 years old. She had a very rare cancer. It's called a sarcoma, which is cancer of the bones. And um, she had essentially released music and put it out on TikTok. And the one that kind of like got, I think uh, she got she got millions and millions of views on, mm. on TikTok was for an original that she'd written from her hospice, from hospice care called Dance You Out of My Head. Um, and as I said, it was she, she it was seen millions of times. She was raising money for her seven year old son and um, essentially for him to have her music catalog um, and music rights in uh, after her death. Um, and she'd said, I, you know, I want my last song to bring joy and fun. It's all I've ever wanted through my battle with cancer. Loads of people kind of resonating with this. It's a really beautiful, powerful thing to do, um, especially, especially sort of posthumously being able to pass on so much money. But there's been a weird sort of twist on this as well. Not not a backlash against her as such, but just, you know, the nature of kind of like the commercial world out there has had a massive impact on who can hear her story and her stuff. Yeah, um, I just realised when looking through her TikTok, seeing how she has very publicly uh, documented her her treatment and her struggles, um, even posting from her um, her hospital bed, a hospice, I should say. Um, mm. That um, you may have seen that TikTok and Universal Music have had a bit of a, a falling out over use and payment for their songs which has led to songs and videos i should say on tiktok being muted not just um uh necessarily yeah just basically any video with that contain the music either miming or having it in the video has been muted so this yeah. means that some of her videos where she talks about and um and uh, documents her cancer treatment have now been muted and you can't hear her you can see her but you can't hear her and that mm. must be kind of quite hard for her family and her followers to now realize they've kind of lost a bit of of her because of yeah. this fall. i mean one can only hope that that maybe they'll make a, a kind of like a, a concession just in this one case or that their row is swiftly kind of like resolved and therefore, you know, the, the, all of that music and audio can be heard again. Um, but it, I hope it doesn't take away from the fact that what she's done is incredibly courageous. Um, I can't think of a more beautiful way of kind of like leaving this world and passing on a legacy to to your to your offspring other than, than, than that. Um, I'm a massive music buff anyway, so I just sort of like, yeah, it's just beautiful, I think. And fingers crossed, we all get to hear her lovely voice again. Now it's time for what it's like to go viral. And um, as a Swifty, I can absolutely concur with this. This is what it's like. This is the impact that Taylor Swift songs, her live, can have on her fans. <laughs> I mean, it's quite the reaction, isn't it? That is a Madison yeah. Blackbird who was sitting outside one of Taylor Swift's recent um, Australia uh, concerts in uh, out in Sydney. Um, so she wasn't actually in the in the uh, the stadium. I think she was outside with friends. Clearly, that song, the song is "Exile." By the way, uh, it meant an awful lot to her, and the TikTok was then seen by millions and pe of of people. Um, you know, anyone who puts Swift hashtag Swifty or anything like that in anything is going to get a lot of views anyway, because Taylor Swift is Taylor Swift. Um, but yeah, I mean the the reaction she had, I think, on the one hand, was just like that's amazing and beautiful and crazy and all the rest of it but some people have been a bit more sinister about it and cynical rather yeah we talk about this a lot just people being sniping about her friends or her reaction itself and um she ended up speaking to rollingstone.com about this experience and um she said that after posting the tiktok she turned the comments off because it was turning negative um and she says um you know i didn't 
she just couldn't see the point and it just seems a bit strange um she's then actually after all the publicity removed the um original tiktok and then posted um uh this response to the haters shall we say this a quick listen to this people get exhausted trying to figure me out and i just let them so yeah she's a, a real swifty a real tiktok user as well and um she told rolling stone that she said i reacted the way i reacted i'm a very passionate person and um she admitted she laughed at the um response to it all but again she's in control and she decided when enough was enough and wanted to move on and she's clearly you know dedicated swifty really means a lot to her and it's the power as you talked about the power of music it can affect mm. people in all different ways yeah and just interesting i think to, to see what it what it is like to go viral she hadn't intended to that wasn't the the, the purpose of posting uh, on tiktok in the first place she said she was expecting to maybe reach 200 people not to not millions um and so and and yeah and then as soon as it became unsustainable for her and uncomfortable then she swiftly kind of swiftly haha see what i did there uh took Thank it down you. as well so um so yeah, it just it's, it's a good lesson for her, I guess, and for other people as well. It's just that you never you never quite know what's going to go viral, and you've got to be prepared to sort of um, act in accordance with your own values, um, as and when it's as and when it doesn't become sustainable anymore. I think she's done a great job here, and yeah. you know, all power to her. And yeah, yeah enjoy enjoy the rest of uh, Taylor Swift's concerts and her new album. Madison as yes, well. Yes, that's coming. Uh, April 19th, the Tortured Poets Department. Can't wait. It's going to be so good. I've got a feeling this may not be the final time we talk about Taylor Swift on the show. <laughs> and now it's time for the Timeline Cleanser. And everyone knows that amazing feeling of buying your first house. <laughs> but imagine finding this when you try out the doorbell. I wasn't expecting that um, and neither were 16 million people who viewed this TikTok from Taylor Ann West. Um, it is, if you haven't guessed already, the music from The Little Mermaid. Under the <laughs> sea, under the sea, <laughs> darling, it's better than we're... Anyway, anyway, I've got massive doorbell envy. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, there's a lot of Disney lovers who were obsessed by this and wanted to know where she got it and uh, her and her uh boyfriend did a lot of research and i think found the most the closest equivalent to it on amazon and posted a link on there or in the bio on tiktok um but it's just it's just captivated tiktok um, <laughs> some people have said I f i'd forget someone was at the door and would just keep vibing <laughs> and I say, this would be a major selling point for me if it was yeah. buying the house me too me too definitely if that i mean i'm i'm genuinely thinking of like now I need, I need to go and search through amazon and find if i can jazz up our very very boring ding dong <laughs> <laughs> i don't think my partner would be very impressed if i started changing our, our doorbell chime <laughs> but hey it's your house you can do whatever you want um, exactly really. my geez. husband's half deaf as well so i can get away with all sorts <laughs> <laughs> I think this, this feature has been Paul Lewis. I think the, the, the theme of this I week's know. show. Fingers crossed um, you listen. <laughs> that's it for this week's show. Um, <laughs> we'll be posting all the links to the um, content creators uh, so you can see the videos in full for yourself and like and share them. And um, we'll be uh, back next week with more clips of uh the funny things and the human stories behind those viral posts so we'll see you next week see you thank you